Alright guys, so this video we are basically going to discuss the power sequence and what the power sequence is, if you haven't figured that out already, is basically the series of contacts that I go through to increase the likelihood of the business calling me back. Okay, so uh, this is basically a, a month long follow up sequence, okay, and what, what you do, you basically lead, so I got day one here with direct mail or email sent. Um, so this is totally up to you guys. I recommend direct mail um, if you want to go that route. If not, you can totally use the power templates that I included and uh, use those to send through email. Um, I just think that the, there's a better response rate whenever you're doing it via direct mail. Um, and then basically what you do is you'll wait four days and then you'll do your either a voice broadcast um, which I'll show you some stuff here in a moment and if you're uh, worried about that being a, uh, a problem legally and stuff I, I got you covered there too so just uh, bear with me here but um, if you guys want to do a live phone call you can do that as well uh, but whichever one you do I recommend that you follow that up with an email uh, so by day five you're basically gonna have three contact attempts okay so day one you send out your direct mail um, we're just assuming that you do direct mail if that's the case you know depending on where you're at and how long the mail takes you could be waiting about four days or so to get the mail out there um, and whenever I'm saying days here you guys I'm referring to business days Monday through Friday I'm not including Saturday even though I know that's counted as a business day um, but yeah Monday through Friday so for example let me, uh, let me pop open a calendar here so if Monday here was day one for example okay so if we got day one there and then we go to day five which would be day one two three four five okay so day five this is when you would send out your phone call your voice broadcast whatever it is that you want to do to try to generate a phone call back and you guys this is assuming too that the businesses haven't called you during this time so there's a, a chance maybe it only takes two days depending on the market you're sending out to um, if they get this and they call you then obviously you'll want to make sure that that business is not included in your follow-up attempts here on this day if you've already talked to them on the Wednesday for example um, because basically the the prospecting sequence here you guys the power sequence this is a sequence that again it, it it's increase in the likelihood of them calling you um, and so once you've made that contact um, I, I kind of give you a note down here so you'll follow along with this sequence until contact has been made and it's established that the prospect either is or is not interested in your services so you know if the direct mail gets sent out and on day one and that prospect calls you back on day three and you guys discuss whatever it is you're going to talk about and you decide that you're not going to work together or it's not a right fit um, then at that point you would get rid of that contact and not do the rest of this so this is basically just to increase the likelihood of contact um, and this is really it's all based around a study done by Leeds 360 and I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with them but they put out a lot of cool um, guides, white papers, whatever you want to call them that it's basically research that they've done so Leads360 is basically a it's like a management platform almost like a CRM uh, leads manager type thing and so they study a lot of leads um, and this is the the big one here so six calls equal success alright and it says basically don't give up too early right so if you were to just call after one time and quit right so basically you're gonna have a 39 percent chance of making contact on that first attempt versus 93 percent chance of making contact with that lead by your sixth attempt um, and so that's why it's basically just encouraging you not to give up after the first try of a contact um, and so if you notice in here there are six phone attempts whether you choose to do the voice broadcast or a live phone call it's up to you um, but there are six calls in here okay so that's really where I got that. that's where it's based around and you know it, it just it really works like crazy if you know if they if you don't get contacted earlier than that which most of the time to be honest with you you're going to um, either you're gonna get contacted or you're gonna have clients signed up already um, and so you may not need to keep prospecting in that particular city um, 
you know, whatever batch of calls you send out or whatever. Um, and so that's really where the, the study is based around you guys. We just go through this and follow the sequence until you have had contact and had a conversation with that business. And then once you do, you can either, you know, close the sale with them, um, which I'll go over in another video, or you can cross them off the list that they're not interested and you just move on. Uh, but the key here is multiple attempts. If you were to go back to this calendar and basically write that out, just like I was showing you. Um, so if we go back here, uh, day seven, day eight, right? So this is day five. And then Monday would be day six, day seven, day eight. Okay, so that's where your day eight would come in and then et cetera. So you just keep going in that, that process, day seven, day eight. And by the time you get through all of these, it's basically going to be a 30 day process. Um, and so you're contacting them if you did this. So you got one, two, email would be three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. That's 15 contact attempts over a month period, uh, which is really going to increase the likelihood of you having a conversation with somebody. So I uh, just want to preach that, you guys, in the prospecting uh, power sequence here. Um, again, I, I got the uh, the templates for you to use for your direct mail or email. Uh, so check those out, and um, I'll go over some of this other stuff in the other videos. Uh, that's going to be all for this one. I'll chat with you guys in the next. Okay guys, so this video we are basically going to cover using your power templates. Okay, so the first video we went over was basically the sequence. Okay, so this was the sequence of events, the amount of times we're going to contact them. Um, and so the very first part of this is your day one, either direct mail or email. And then these are basically going to coordinate with the templates. Okay, so there's basically three sections here of content three sections of contacts I'm sorry okay so you're leading with day one here it starts with direct mail you do it again here and then you do it again here okay and so you're leading and we got three templates for each of those whether you choose direct mail or email again that's up to you uh, but if I hop back over here this is basically the templates okay so there's gonna be a download below the video for you to check these out but I just wanted to walk you through these and basically just kind of uh, talk to you about it a little bit um, so again this is the first template and template number one goes along with your day number one um, so this is what you would send out to start your campaign alright and just hop back over here and so I got email subject lines here for you guys um, so if you decide that you want to send this via email you can certainly do that um, use subject lines like that or if you want to get more creative yourself you can definitely do that um, but those have worked for me in emails as far as getting good open rates so you can check those out too um, or try to use those if you want but this is basically the mail contact and so it tells you here that we're basically tapping into the poor leads anger um, and so, you know, I, I mentioned that you guys, this was written by a copywriter and this is, you know, all the, I don't understand the copywriting jargon, but um, it's basically just tapping into the emotional triggers that they're experiencing from currently purchasing leads from Home Advisor, right? And so most of these people are getting poor leads and they're pretty ticked off about it. Um, and so you can read through this. I'm not going to read it word for word, um, but basically, you guys, the, the three templates, the very top part of the template the start of the letters are going to be different and then basically the end of it's kind of the same so you get their attention with the beginning of each of these and then you kind of close with the same method right so again the the first contact here we're tapping into the poor leads anger uh, if we scroll down to the second template um, this one is tapping into competition anger um, so this one we really hit on the fact that home advisor is reselling the same leads for up to 10 different contractors um, again you guys you will get to this template once you have reached day 8 in your sequence um, so if you mail that first template on day one and you have actually had contact with that business before day eight then you're not going to send that one right so you're going to just stop your sequence at that point once you have a decision made either in your favor or not in your favor um, but that's just how the the process goes as far as you know using the templates or not using them um, so that's the second one and the third and final one yeah i'm not going to read all these to you because uh, you can read yourself i'm sure 
Uh, but this one we are tapping into fear of loss of work, okay? And it's a, a really big thing for contractors. The, the next job is the most important thing to them. Um, so whenever you hit on that trigger, you know that you know they're going to be losing work and they're stressed about it all the time. How are they going to get new leads? Uh, we really hit on that in this letter, and um, it, it's just really designed to you know rub salt in their wounds and just get them to pick up the phone and call you because they're like, okay, there really is a, a better way out there than Home Advisor. Um, if I ever say service magic in these videos, I apologize. Um, out of habit uh, I've been doing this since they were serfs magic and um, it, it kind of uh, just comes out of my mouth sometimes so just know service magic home advisor same thing um, but yeah so that's the third template and that one corresponds back here on the power sequence with day 15 okay and so that's basically when those are gonna go out so your first one day one first or second one goes out on day eight and your third and final one would go out here on day 15 um, and again for each of these you guys I'm sure you saw that there are subject lines if you decide to go the email route um, one thing I will say you guys about email um, if you do decide to go that route it's very important that you know whether or not the business you sent the email to has actually opened the email um, and something that I've done that's actually worked really well for me um, I use a, a program called Yesware tied into my Gmail account um, and it's free if you only send like a hundred prospecting emails or trackable emails per month uh, but what's cool about it is you get notified as soon as somebody opens that email um, and why that's cool is you know exactly when the contractor has opened your email and they just read it so I like to as soon as I get that I'll shoot another follow-up email to him like hey I just wanted to touch base with you to see if you've got a chance to read the email that I sent you just something like that because I know that obviously they have and then they're right there at their computer at that moment so they're thinking wow yeah let me you know let me respond to this guy or not you know um, but I have had good response doing that I've actually made a video for uh, another product that I sold um, I talked about email tracking and I actually walk you guys through setting that up um, within Gmail and I show you a couple other ways to track your emails if you're not using something uh, like get response or Aweber or something like that um, if you're using a standard email service like Gmail um, then this video is gonna rock for you guys I'll put that in the additional resources folder um, so if you guys want to check that out, it's just a video. Um, I will reference like landing pages and PPC, so just ignore that part of it. But um, the core of it is how to track your emails if you guys don't know how to do that. Um, but yeah, you guys, use these templates in coordination with your power sequence on day 1, day 8, and day 15. If you get that far, again, most of the time you're not going to get this far before you make contact. Uh, but just in case you get a stubborn business that won't call you, uh, you want to keep sending out messages to them until you get to have a conversation with them. Um, so that's going to be all you guys for discussing the actual power templates. Uh, I will chat with you guys in the next video. Alright guys, so we just finished up going through your power templates and showing you how to integrate those. Um, now the next step in the sequence here, so let me pull that back up for you guys. Um, if I can find it here okay so the next step in the sequence we are basically going to contact them either by phone or by voice broadcast alright um, so using the phone obviously I'm gonna give you guys the script that you can use um, if you're doing a live phone call with this um, you know you may want to modify the script slightly uh, just because this whole thing is kinda set up around the voice broadcast but you can definitely modify it just a little bit to go along with the live phone call. Um, so if you go that route, I definitely recommend you at least look at it and see how you can adapt to uh, have it make sense. Uh, one way that you could use the exact script with the live phone call is if you were to call, for instance, after hours and leave them a voicemail. So if you're absolutely scared of the phone and you don't want to talk to somebody live up front uh, with a live sales call, um, then you know recommend calling after hours and leaving the voicemail it's gonna have the same effect as the voice broadcast so uh, if you want to go the live route definitely do that now uh, if you want to do the voice broadcast I am going to first pull up a little 
website called callfire.com. All right, so first let me just start by saying that any voice broadcast system that lets you send out a targeted MP3 message to a list of phone numbers is going to work for you. So you don't have to use Callfire. Uh, there are several people that have made softwares that do this for WordPress, um, all kinds of things like that. So don't get hung up on Callfire specifically, uh, but you know any type of voice broadcast system will work. So if you're not in the U.S., I'm not a hundred percent sure where uh, where all Callfire is um, will allow you to call to. Uh, but it definitely allows you to in the US. I know anything that ties into Twilio, there's several different countries that Twilio works with. Um, so yeah, just look at that. You guys, there's some, some cool softwares that are out there, um, but I'm gonna just talk to you guys about Callfire. So if you wanna use this, you can, but remember you can use any voice broadcast software that you want. I like Callfire, it's free, so you don't have to buy anything. You're basically just paying for your messaging, right? So if you were to go to the pricing section on um, on a voice broadcast, I think it's like 3.5 cents per minute. Um, again, I know there's other softwares that'll go down to like two cents a minute, depending on which country you're in. Um, but this one, again, you don't have to pay for any software. It's just uh, basically sign up and pay as you go type of thing. Um, so again, the voice broadcast, let me, uh, if you go to tour on callfire.com, I'll just kind of show you how I got here. Uh, and there's basically a list of all their different services across the top. It's another reason I like Callfire too, is they just have a ton of uh, different services that all work well for offline marketing. Uh, but if you were to click on voice broadcast and then click here, learn more about voice broadcast. <clears throat> and let's hit see more. And you guys, I'm not going to go in how to set it up using Callfire because they have awesome tutorials. Um, but I'm going to go over the script and basically you're just going to take the script that I give you, use a free audio recording program like Audacity, uh, record your MP3 and then you just upload it however they're giving you instructions to do that. Okay, so first thing I want to address, a lot of people have a misconception that it's illegal to send these, especially if you're in the U.S. Um, there's been some stuff in some Facebook groups about FTC compliance and all this stuff, but you guys, I've read through it a lot, and it only applies to B to C, so businesses calling to consumers. They have a lot of limitations in place that's going to prevent a business from calling consumer people, right, consumer clients, and hitting them with robocalls or whatever you want to call it. Um, so... I'll just show you here, right here at the bottom, they actually have this FTC DNC compliance link, so they're making sure that you understand the rules as well. Um, and I will show you um, down here, they even call fire, so this is what they do. Um, basically, they've listed exemptions here, so it says before you use call fire for your business, um, you know, you want to make sure that you're allowed to call them basically. So. Um, says your organization qualifies for one or more of the specific exemptions contained in the FTC and FCC rules such as and then right down here they have this one specifically you only make business to business calls so as long as you're just calling businesses you are okay um, according to that law so don't worry about that you guys will be fine um, just grab your phone numbers upload them and that's all you need to do um, so again, with the, regarding the phone numbers, I showed you guys in the main guide how to get the customers from Home Advisor's website. Um, you just basically take their contact information, upload it here, and you'll be good to go. Uh, but I just wanted to touch on that, you guys, because I know somebody's going to come back and say, oh, we're not allowed to do that, but you are. Don't worry about it. Um, I have done this to thousands of businesses, and I've never had one problem with it. Um, so yeah, I don't. Think you guys anything have uh, you don't have anything to worry about as far as that goes um, so again you guys I'm not going to get into the details on how to set this up because they really have detailed tutorials um, all you need to do is record your message which I'm about to show you in mp3 format and upload it here go through their process of uploading your phone numbers and then it's as simple as basically clicking a button to broadcast your message right um, and it looks like they even have a record function inside here. Um, so if you don't want to use a program like Audacity, you can grab a microphone, hook it up to your computer, record your uh, your sales message, which I'm about to show you, um, and then basically do it all right there. So um, Callfire is really cool if you guys want to 
definitely uh, check that out if you want to go that route. Uh, but let me hop over to the message now. Okay, so this is what I call the money script. And let me, I guess, start by saying I, this message, if you follow this thing to the T, it works. I mean, I, I told you uh, in the sales letter that I literally had 40 plus students uh, pay $497 to really get access to the script you know we we did a webinar we sold it as kind of a it was some one-on-one -on -one coaching too so that's why it was a little bit more expensive but they're really they wanted the script because a lot of people have tried voice broadcast and it just doesn't work um, even for selling lead generation services um, but this one works really well so use it to the T um, and it's basically this right hi this is Chris Beatty again I'm calling back because I still need a roofer in Chicago to take the phone leads that I'm getting you know these are people that are trying to get a roofer out to their house as soon as possible and unfortunately for me I'm not a roofer so I would hate for all these to hit the floor and go unanswered I really need someone to send them to just call me back if you want me to send them to you my phone number 555-555-5555 and then again that's repeat the phone number and then end with the thank you okay and I actually give you guys a link um, to the exact message that I got 74 callbacks in Chicago with so if you guys want to click that you can listen to the message probably sounds about like I just read to you so uh, that's the exact message and I say make it sound as natural as possible um, then you guys can read this and I basically just go over some stuff about how I basically stumbled onto that script and how it works so well um, so go through this gold nugget here read through these things um, definitely take that script and either use a, a program like audacity um, or within call fire they have that audio recorder built in um, but you're basically just going to replace the name with your name okay you're gonna replace the city with whichever city you decide to call and that's pretty much it and then your phone number right so at this point you're going to have a phone number that you want them to call you back um, which actually I'm going to be going over in the next video how to set up a voicemail system if you don't want to field the phone calls live um, if you want to take them live uh, then just put in your phone number stick it right there and that's all you need to do um, upload that message and send out your voice broadcast if that's what you want to use um, again if you want to call after hours definitely you can take the same script leave it on their voicemail no problem um, if you're going to call live um, then you know, you're probably going to add in a little bit of filler because you don't want to just read off a script to them um, but this will give you a good starting point if you want to go that route got a feeling most of you guys are going to do the voice broadcast because that's really uh, how you can target mass businesses and get a several several callbacks um, and so basically as far as the the power sequence goes we covered the the templates all right and if you look in the sequence again so we send out the direct mail or the email if you haven't heard back from them then that's when you go to the voice broadcast all right and with the voice broadcast in the message you're actually telling them you know that you still haven't heard back from them um, and so that works really well once they've looked at your direct mail and then they get a voice message from you like oh yeah that's what that letter was about um, so it just all works really well together again you would follow that up on day seven if you do not hear back from them um, but yeah you guys I'm gonna include a copy to the money script right underneath this video uh, definitely check that out record it word for word read through here give you an idea of how I came across that um, it's definitely some good information for you in that document um, so that's gonna be all for the money script I'll chat with you guys in the next video alright guys so this video we are basically going to discuss setting up open VBX now I, I mentioned this in the uh, frequently asked questions section of the sales page uh, somebody asked me specifically you know are, is the voicemail software that I showed that screenshot of in the sales page is that free or is it an upsell it is totally free you guys it's called open VBX it ties into Twilio and basically what you can do if you choose to go this route is set it up to where after you send out your voice broadcast that we talked about in the last video you ask them to call a number back and when they call that number back that number goes straight to a voicemail uh, without having to a, a live person to answer the phone call now let me I guess first tell you why that's important so if you do the voice broadcast route whenever you guys send that message out you're gonna be getting quite a few phone calls back all at the same time so there's no way that you would possibly be able to answer all those calls live anyway unless you had multiple people answering different phone lines for you um, so I recommend doing it this way you guys 
Um, so I'm going to walk you through the process of setting that up. And the first thing you want to do is go to openvbx.org. Okay, so there's the website. And right at the very top of the home page, there is a download button. Okay, it says 5.5 megabyte zip file. So click on that. And basically, you're going to go to this section and click on the .zip file. Um, just a quick note too, you guys are going to need some type of hosting account. So hopefully, uh, if you're doing local marketing, you have some type of hosting account. If you don't have one, get one. I recommend Bluehost just because that's what I use and I'm familiar with. Uh, they're awesome. The customer service is great. So definitely recommend that if you don't have a host. Uh, but basically, anything that allows you to set up like subdomains, gives you access to MySQL 5+, plus, um, all those things, um, then it'll be okay for you. Um, and another thing too, you're going to need a Twilio account. So set that up. It's free. You basically just have to fund the account with a little bit of money. Um, so with OpenVBX, again, it's a free software, but you basically get charged one cent per incoming minute. So when a business calls you back and leaves you a voicemail, um, it's basically one cent per minute. So that's all you guys have to worry about you know, getting charged. But you basically pre-fund the account, so you stick like $15 in the account, and then every time someone calls you back, it's gonna charge you one penny per minute, uh, depending on the country that you're in. So uh, US, I know for a fact, is one cent per incoming minute phone call. Um, so yeah, go ahead, click on this, download the zip file here. Um, this should start downloading for me and it's gonna be my downloads folder so you can stick this wherever you guys want just make sure that you can find it here in a minute uh, but basically once that downloads now uh, the next thing you guys will want to do is go to this plugin section uh, so open VBX again it's a open source software um, and so just like WordPress people can make plugins that tie into open VBX and allows the plugin or the the software to function certain ways um, so if you go down right now, I think this is on page three. Um, there is a plugin called the subscription plugin. Now, if you guys saw in that uh, screenshot where I had Chicago callbacks, that's what this subscription plugin is. It allows you to set up a list to where you can see all the phone numbers of people that have called you back. Um, so you'll want to do the same thing here. Go ahead and click on that, and it's going to take me to a page where I can download the file and let me grab this here so here's a zip file download this repository as a zip file alright so let's go ahead grab that and we got open VBX subscription dash master dot zip alright so that is the first thing we need to do alright so we got our open VBX software downloaded and we have our subscription plugin and at this point that's all we need for that um, so next thing I want to say just to uh, speed things up for you if you want to open up a text document or something like that and what you want to do again I mentioned you need your Twilio account so hop over to twilio.com T-W-I-L-I-O dot com and what you're gonna do here you guys once you log in uh, you're going to be given what's called your account SID and you're gonna be given what's called your authorization token so copy your account SID stick that here and then same thing copy your authorization token let's go ahead and grab that stick it here because you're gonna need these um, in a moment once I show you how to actually install this calling platform on your web host okay um, and so now we're going to hop over to our hosting account so again I told you guys that I'm with Bluehost basically any hosting that has cPanel is going to make it easy these all basically look the same whether it's Bluehost, HostGator, or anything like that there should be a section in your cPanel titled domains um, and I like to set the software up on a subdomain um, so if I were to click here on this subdomains um, then basically I am just going to set up a subdomain on whatever URL that I want to access and this doesn't matter you're the only one that's going to be using this you and your team um, so no customers are going to see it or anything like that so it really doesn't matter where you stick it as long as you know where it's at so for this example um, I will do something like voicemails dot uh, let's see I'm chris 
All right, so I'm going to set up a subdomain that will be voicemails.imchrisbailey.com. And now I'm going to click create. And once that is finished, uh, then we're basically going to navigate to um, our file manager and we're going to start setting things up here. So, uh, first thing, set up your subdomain. I got mine set up here. And let's just go ahead, grab that, and stick it on this document as well. I just like to have a text document up so that I can keep track of what I'm doing. Um, now, let's go back to my cPanel section. And the next thing you guys need to do is this might sound a little bit scary, but you have to set up a database for this. Now, it's really not difficult, and you'll see why it's not difficult here in a moment. But um, basically, I want to just show this to you guys. So let's uh, let's find databases. <clears throat> All right. So again, there's another section called databases right under the domains if you're in Bluehost. Um, and then basically what you need to do is just go to my SQL MySQL databases and once we click on this we basically just need to set up a database so you can call this whatever you want I'm gonna call it voicemail just to keep it consistent and let's go ahead and click create database so you guys can name it whatever you want just whatever you guys call it I want you to copy that and stick it on that cheat sheet all right, so let's pop that back open, stick it there. Now let's hit go back. Okay, so now we have a database set up for our software. And the next thing we're going to do is add a user to the database. Okay, so you just keep scrolling down. It might look just a little bit different if you're using a different host, but it's all basically the same. Um, so this one, I'm going to set up a username. We'll just say new voicemail again can be whatever we want can't be longer than seven digits so um, local there we go we'll just use local okay it doesn't really matter what it is so um, and then what you're gonna do is set up a password so I'm going to do something simple all right and tells me the strength and you'll see why it's crappy in a minute. It's testing one, two, three, four. At least I used a capital T though, so that's really cool. Um, either way, so now we got a username, password, hit create user. And once this goes here, it's going to give us these. Um, so again, you want to copy both of these and you'll see why in a minute, why you want to have all this information. So copy down your username. All right, and let's put that there. And then we're going to copy the password same thing here okay so we got username password and we'll call this database okay and this is the subdomain Sorry guys, I should have done this earlier. Auth token and <clears throat> account SID. All right, so once we got those set up, you guys, um, again, we're at, back here to the user. We just set that up, hit go back. And at this point, now we have to assign that user to the database that we just set up. Okay, and so this is uh, another simple process. So right under where you created that user, you see a little section that says add user to database. And so I'm going to find the user that I just created, which was realtop1 underscore local. And the database was realtop1 underscore voicemail. All right, so there was the database, there was the username, so now we're assigning that user to that voicemail, click add, that user to that database, I mean. Um, and then what you need to do here, you guys, is just select all privileges, hit make changes, and that is going to be all for setting up your database, okay? So that is probably the most difficult part of this whole thing, so uh, once you get past that, you guys should be in the clear, but again, this is a piece of cake to set up. Um, so should not have any problems with that. 
Okay, so now if we just go back to our cPanel, the main page here, um, now we have to install the software, right? The Twilio OpenVBX software, and then we're going to install that plugin, okay? And so what you need to do, um, if you're familiar with FTP, you can definitely go that route. Um, for those less technically savvy, you can use your file manager. So go to the file section here, click on file manager, and you're going to find the subdomain that you want to install that on. So again, we set up the subdomain of, let's see, I think it was voicemail. I got a lot of domains. Okay, so voicemails.imchrisbetty.com. That's the subdomain I wanted to set this up on. We'll go ahead and click go. And so now we are in that root directory for that subdomain. Okay, and so on the main section here, this is where we're going to upload the software. So first thing you want to do is click upload. And this is going to take us to a page where we can upload the zip file. So now we're going to choose file. And I got to go to my downloads and let's find OpenVBX here with my million files. I need to clear this thing out, don't I? Uh, let's see here. LMNO. All right. OpenVBX plugin. Where we go here? <clears throat> oh, it's under Twilio. Sorry about that. Uh, let's see. QRST. Yes, I do the alphabet when I'm doing this. So, <laughs> okay, so here's the Twilio plugin, right? So, this is where we're going to upload OpenBBX. So, let's click on this zip file, and you're going to see that it is starting the upload down here in the lower right. And it'll just take a minute or so to uh, upload this here, um, probably less than that, maybe 30 seconds. Uh, but looks like it's about finished up here, and now it says it's complete. So, at this point, I'll go back to the page here. Uh, if we click close, we're going to go back here and now you see that this zip file is right here. All right, And so what we're going to do now is right click and we're going to click extract. All right, So let's extract the files. Public HTML slash voicemails. Yes, that's fine. And let's click extract files. This little box is going to pop up. Ignore it. Just hit close. And once we do that, um, it might show the files automatically. A lot of times you have to hit the reload or refresh button. Um, so if I hit reload, now you see I have a folder. And the way they package this zip file, you guys, I'll show you another step we have to take here. Um, but now you can go ahead and click on the zip file, delete it because we have already extracted the files here um, for OpenVBX. And now if we click on that, all right, what we're going to do is click on the very first item, and then we're going to scroll to the very last item, hold down your shift button, and click on the last one, and it's going to highlight everything. All right, and so at this point, all you're going to do is right click, and we're going to move the files. And then all you need to do is delete that folder name. And we're just going to move it back to the root directory of public underscore HTML forward slash voicemails. All right, so let's move the files. And now that directory is empty. If we go up one level, it's just going to take us back to where we were. All right, and now this is the folder that we were just in. Now that that's empty because everything's here in the main directory. And you can just click on this thing and delete it. All right, so that is deleted now. We don't need that. And the next step we need to do is install our plugin. All right, and so here's a folder that's called plugins. Click on the plugins folder. And what we're going to do here is upload that zip file. So, same thing, click on upload. Let's go ahead, choose file. And this one is under OpenVBX, so let's go back to the O's. And OpenVBX plugin subscription, all right? So let's click on that bad boy, and that one should upload really fast. Um, it's complete already. Go ahead and go back to your file manager. And now you see we got the subscription plugin. Same thing, we have to click on it and extract that from the zip file. So right click, click extract extract files 
Again, little pop-up box, ignore that, just close it. And same thing, it might show you the file right away or you might have to hit reload. Once I do that, now that plugin is there and you can delete the zip file. And bam, we are finished with installing this portion of OpenVBX. So that's kind of a long video, you guys. I'm going to end this one and I'll pick up in the next one where we actually set up OpenVBX on uh, as far as like integrating it with your Twilio account. So um, again, that was a long video. I uh, hope you uh, got everything. If you need to pause any part of this to get everything set up, make sure that you are at least to this point before you move on to the next video. Uh, but I'll chat with you guys in the next. All right guys, so picking back up here with the OpenVBX installation, the next part, we're basically going to integrate your Twilio account. So remember that information we grabbed here, your authorization token, your account SID, all of these things here, uh, make sure that those are ready right now. Uh, but if you installed everything properly up to this point, um, if you navigate now to that subdomain that you set up, now for me it was voicemails.imchrisbaity.com, if you click on that, it's going to automatically take you to an install screen, okay? And so now if everything's green and gray, then you guys should be good to go. If there's anything red here that's pointing out, you might have some problems and you may need to contact your hosting support to make sure that everything um, on your hosting side is configured for it to work. It should work out of the gate. Um, actually, the, the 40 people that uh, went through the coaching program, I think maybe two of them had issues uh, with their hosting account. Um, so this should be what you're looking out, looking at, um, and then at this point, you basically click the next button, and this is where you're going to click on host name. So this is going to be left as localhost, and then the database name. So this is the database we set up. Let's click on that, and just right click, copy and paste it there. Same thing. Now we're going to do the username. Control C for me, and Control V to paste it and then we're going to put in the password this great password testing one two three four <laughs> and let's put that there okay so once you have that information inputted right here where it says configure database we're gonna click next and then this is where you need your SID and your Twilio token alright so let's start with the SID which was the very first number inside your Twilio account and then let's go with the Twilio authorization token which was this little fella here. Control V to paste that there. And this part you don't need to worry about. Go ahead and click Next. And notifications will come from. All right, so OpenVBX is going to notify you when someone leaves you a voicemail. Um, and so wherever you want to, uh, or where you want that email to come from, um, you can just put it there. So I'm just going to do Chris at I'm Chris Beatty dot com. And let's go ahead and hit next. And then this is where you're just going to put in your information. So this is going to set up a user account for you within OpenVBX. So Chris Beatty, Chris at I'm Chris Beatty .com. And this is what you're going to log in with, you guys. So your email address and password you set up is going to be how you access your software. So make sure you remember these. And I'm going to go ahead and put in a password here. This one's a lot better of a password. <laughs> All right, and so once your passwords are there, um, they don't give you any confirmation if they're the same, so you wanna make sure that they are. Um, then if we hit install, and it's gonna take just a second here, and it's going to tell you that your installation is complete. Thanks for choosing OpenVBX, enjoy. All right, so that's it. You guys have the software installed at this point. Your plugins installed, everything is ready to go. Um, now we just have to basically set up everything to be able to receive those voicemails. Um, so again, I'm gonna cut this video short uh, just because I think this is a good stopping point. And if you guys click that green button that I just did, um, it's gonna take you to the login screen. So uh, let me just say real quick now, if I were to just go at this point to that URL, so if I go to voicemails.imchrisbetty.com, now it's always just going to take me to this login screen. So it's no longer going to take you to that setup process. Once it is set up, installed, and configured, you're going to have the login screen all the time. So I would basically log in at this point, Chris at I'mchrisbetty.com using my password that I just set up. 
Again, this is not your database password. This is the one we just set up on the previous screen. So Chris at I'mChrisBaity.com, my password. And if I hit log in, now I'm going to be inside the Open VBX software, uh, which is where I'm going to pick up in the next video and show you guys how to set everything up to where whenever a business calls you back, if you want that to go directly to a voicemail, this is exactly what you guys need to do. Um, so I'll chat with you guys in the next video. All right, guys, so this video is basically going to be the final step of setting up your OpenVBX software to receive voicemails um, or phone calls that go straight to a voicemail. So again, this is if you guys want to set it up to where when you send out your voice broadcast or when you call after hours, if you want them to call back and go straight to a voicemail, then this is what you need to do. All right, so we've set up OpenVBX at this point. Uh, we have the software installed. Go ahead and log into your software. Um, again, I have that set up here, so once you're inside, it's going to look just like this. Um, you can go ahead and hide this message, um, so no worries there. If you set up a trial account, it might say that you need to upgrade to your regular account, uh, which basically means you just need to add some funds to the account, um, so that's basically all you would need to do. Um, and so the next thing you guys need to do um, is set up what's called an incoming call flow, all right? And so if you go to the left, you're going to see all these headings here. Um, so the first up here, this is where you're going to get all your voicemail. So when someone calls back, that's where your voicemails are going to be listed. And if we go admin and then flows, this is where you're going to set that up. So basically a flow is you telling OpenBBX what you want to happen when certain actions take place. Okay, and so what you do, click on flows and then click new flow. And then for me, for example, if I was calling Chicago, okay, so let's say I was calling Chicago Roofers, and this is the flow that I want them to go straight to a voicemail. So I would call this in or inbound Chicago, and then whatever the niche is. So if we did Roofers, okay, so let's call it inbound Chicago Roofers, click OK. And basically at this point you're going to be taken to a screen and in the middle you're going to see basically where you're going to drag these little applets over to. Um, so it says when a call begins, what should we do? And basically what we're going to do is take these people and we're going to send them through a voicemail process. Um, so first of all, you guys, I'm going to just go ahead and hit save because I kind of got ahead of myself there. Um, it says flow has been saved so now I can go ahead and just close this out and now you're gonna see that that flows there and it's not set up yet so I'll get back to that in a moment um, before you do that what you want to do is set up a list okay and so that little screenshot where I showed you that I got you know 74 callbacks in Chicago and the 217 phone calls this is basically where you're gonna set up those lists okay so if you click on manage lists you're gonna click on the green add list button in the top right once we click that you're gonna name this Chicago roofers callbacks okay and so you name it city name it niche and then callbacks alright so let's go ahead hit save and once we do that now you see I have a list that says Chicago roofers callbacks zero subscribed don't worry about these three things this is if you wanted to delete that list if you made a mistake if you wanted to change the name of this, then you basically would just go in and edit that. Uh, but what we're going to do at this point, you guys, um, if people start to call you back and you get like 10 people here, you can click on this and then a drop down menu is going to show up with all the phone numbers. Um, so right now it's zero. Obviously, I just set that up. Um, so there's no callbacks. Um, but once you do that, then you're going to go back to the flows and set up your call flow. All right. So if we go back here to flows, now we're at inbound Chicago roofers and let's go ahead and click edit call flow again if you didn't do this part just click on the green new flow button and it's going to take you right here so the very first thing we want to add somebody to that list so right now we're telling open VBX when someone calls my number what do I want to happen alright and the first thing I want to happen is for that person that phone number to be added to a list and so on the right, there's a little applet that's called subscription. That's the plugin we installed. If you just drag this plugin, drop it right here, 
and if this is your first one you're only going to have one list here once you start to add multiple lists you'll want to make sure you're picking the correct one um, and again you're going to set up one of these flows for every city that you send out targeted messages to okay the action should always say add and then we have to tell the system once we've added somebody to that list what do we want to happen next and that is to play our voicemail greeting okay and so drag the voicemail app here and at this point I'm going to take you to the script so what you need to have now is your incoming message recorded so that you can upload it here as an mp3 again you can use a free program like audacity to record your mp3 and then once you do you will upload it here and I'll show you how to do that in a moment um, and then that's basically all we have to do so I'm going to go ahead and just navigate away from this page and I have a document right under this which is your straight to voicemail script um, and so basically you guys I talked about in the money script how you know the first step is we want them to call back and the second step we want them to leave us a voicemail because that makes them more qualified as a hot prospect and they're asking us to call them back right so it's good to call back people that don't leave you a voicemail because you're gonna be able to see people that called back and you're gonna be able to see people that called back and left a voicemail for you uh, they're both qualified customers uh, because they heard your outgoing message and took the time to actually call you back and basically you're you're going to go through this document here and at the very end of this I have the script but just read through this it kinda gives you a background on how I came about this script as well but at the very bottom of this script is the actual here's my incoming message so this would be the script that you record word for word between the quotations again obviously you're gonna replace your name here and that's really all you're going to replace and the niche um, and so once you have recorded this script word for word then you're going to take that script and you're gonna upload it right here so if we click upload an mp3 and now you're gonna be asked to select the file and so once it does this it's gonna pop open a um, a list of all your your documents here from your computer so you just find wherever it is that you saved that recorded message to um, and then you're going to upload it so I'm just gonna click on that click upload and once it's uploaded it'll probably start playing so you can go ahead and just pause that um, hey there see that so uh, we'll go ahead and pause that and then at this point you guys all you have to do is click save and then you're all set up as far as your call flow goes so you can close this out and the next important thing that I want to say is now you have to set up a phone number through Twilio that your prospects are going to call back okay so in your outgoing the money script that I talk about at the end of that I had that five 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 number and that number is going to be what we're talking about here so in your outgoing message you say call me back at this number and then when they do that they're gonna be sent to this voicemail okay and so again if I pop that script back open here so the money script if you guys download that I say call me back if you want me to send them to you my phone number is okay so this is going to be the phone number all right obviously not 555 um, number here but if we close that down and hop back here you see right now there's no phone number assigned to this call flow okay and so what we have to do is assign a phone number right under the flows tab on the left hand side you'll see numbers okay so go ahead and click numbers now for you it's probably showing no numbers just like mine because this is a brand new install if you have a Twilio account that's existing and you click on numbers used on other domains and you click show it's gonna pull in all the phone numbers that you have tied to that Twilio account now if you want to use one of those um, and you're not using it for anything else then you basically just find that phone number click on import number and then you're gonna assign that to your inbound Chicago roofers call flow right here okay I don't want to do that right now because I'm using these um, and so what I'm going to do right from within open VBX you guys can pick a phone number and you can buy it right from Twilio alright so if I click on this green button up here that says get a number right so for example if you guys don't have any phone numbers this is brand new to you click get a number 
and let's say I decided to call Indianapolis, right? I've called Indianapolis several times, um, but 317 is my area code for Indianapolis. So whichever market you decide, you know, you went through the guide and you found a specific market, a specific niche that you want to call in, find out the area code for that area, uh, just because it helps if you're getting, you're asking the contractor to call back a local number. Um, it always helps, at least it, in my experience with it, it does. Um, and so once I hit area code one plus three one seven, again, hit add number. At this point, it's telling me that it's ordering. And here's my new phone number, 317-565-4390. And then at this point, again, I'm just gonna click set up later because uh, I already have a flow set up. Um, so let's click set up later. And now, um, let's see here, if I go <clears throat> back to numbers, uh, click on create a new flow, all you have to do is pick your inbound flow right here. Okay, so if we click inbound flow, you're gonna get a little pop-up that asks if you want to change this call flow, click yes. And now you see this phone number, 317-565-4390, is now connected to inbound Chicago roofers, okay? and so. Now, if you go back to the flow section, click on flows, and it's gonna take us back here. Now you see inbound Chicago roofers, 317-565-4390, and everything's set up. So, let me just kind of wrap this up and kind of summarize everything for you again. In your money script, this is your outgoing message, okay? I would say, call me back if you want me to send them to you. My phone number is 317 Five six five four three nine zero. Again, that's three one seven five six five four three nine zero. Now, when that person calls this phone number, whatever you set up in this call flow is what that person is going to experience. Okay, so when they call that number, they're first getting added to my Chicago Roofers callback list, and then they're getting forwarded directly to my voice message. Uh, which again, I'm not going to play it here, but this would be the message that you record from your straight to voicemail script, uh, which is right here under here's my incoming message. Bam, record that, upload it to OpenVBX, and you'll hit save and close. And so that is basically the process. And then once people leave you a voicemail, then all those voicemails are gonna be here in your inbox, all right? So you'll just click on inbox, and you're going to see a list of all the messages that you have here. Um, they try to transcribe the messages for you. You can turn that function off inside Twilio, but a transcription, that it's typically a pretty crappy job. Um, it says some pretty funny stuff sometimes, so don't go by that, but if you just click on the message, you'll be able to actually listen to the voicemail, and then at that point, you're going to call them back, you or someone on your sales team, and you're gonna go over the sales script, which I'm going to cover in the next video for you guys. Uh, but that's the next part is basically closing the sale at this point you have hot prospects who left you a voicemail or you have warm prospects who maybe called you but didn't leave a voicemail right so sometimes people just want to talk to a live person and they're not going to leave you a voicemail it's just how some people are so you know if maybe they heard you record a message they recognize that it was recorded and now you know they're like okay I'm gonna call them back anyway because I really need some new business and they call back and it goes straight to a voicemail. They're like, oh crap, you know, I'm not ever gonna get to talk to somebody live. Doesn't mean they're not interested, it just means that they probably wanted to talk to somebody live, okay? And so what'll happen is you'll get some people, like this number might be 30, okay? So you might get 30 callbacks, but only 15 voicemails. What I recommend, start with the voicemails because those are your hottest people, call them back, once you get through them, then you're going to hop over to the rest of the phone numbers, the people that didn't leave you a voicemail, and call those people back. So you definitely want to call everybody back, keep going through that sequence, you guys, and you're going to start closing new business. So um, again, I'm going to pick up in the next video with the sales script, so I'll check you guys out in that one. Hey guys, it's Chris. Um, I just wanted to talk to you about closing the sale. So once you have you know, send out your call blast and you have people calling you back leaving voicemails, uh, the next step is obviously to call them back and try to close the sale. Um, so what I did is included this callback script. Uh, the link should be below the video for you to download this if you haven't already. Uh, but you can just read through it. This is basically what I give to my sales guy 
uh, just to kind of give him some points that he could touch on during the callback. Um, you don't have to go through and read this, you know, word for word or whatnot. You can put your own spin on it. Uh, but the idea was to just have some bold items like the introduction, how it works, the phone calls. Um, just because as you're going through the conversation, the person on the other end might ask, you know, about the phone call. So you can just navigate to that part of the script and kind of go off of that as far as that goes. Um, the, the big thing here, um, I guess, is about the closing technique. Um, so, so with the closing technique, the, the big thing is you keeping control. Um, so you know for a fact, if, if you're using the call script appropriately um, when you're doing your call blasts, that you're getting quite a few callbacks. Um, and when you are, it's okay to tell these business owners when you're calling them back that you, know, you have multiple people that called you back asking about the leads. Um, so it's good that you keep control and let them know that you're going to be the one picking, um, picking who that is uh, that you're going to work with. It, it, it's really it, it's a scarcity technique at the same time. Um, it, it's also the truth because you honestly should call all these people back uh, and, and do some homework on them before you decide you're going to work with somebody because you don't want to be sending leads to a client that has a horrible reputation, they have bad reviews. Uh, so up front, you're not doing that homework on them, uh, but after you get somebody interested, you definitely want to do that. Um, so, so the big thing, you know, go through, talk to all the business owners, tell them that you're in the process of calling everybody back, and you know you'll be making the decision within the next day or so. Um, and then do your homework on the on the clients, make sure that they have a good reputation whenever you sign them up. Um, and, and then whenever you call them back, then it's basically, you know, we chose you. Um, it looks like you have a good online reputation. Um, so we're confident sending the leads to you that you're going to take good care of the clients that, you know, the leads that we're generating for you. Um, and just go through this closing section here and close the sale. It's, uh, it's really not a difficult sell. Um, and again, I just want to emphasize on the fact that you keep control. Um, you're letting them know that you're deciding who you're going to work with. And uh, almost take the ball out of their court to where they feel like it's a it's a privilege if they're the one getting the leads, uh, which it really is. You're getting them exclusive leads um, that are ringing straight to their cell phone or to their work phone, um, and they're not having to to pick up the phone, call these people back as long as they're answering the phone. Um, where a place like Service Magic stuff like that, they're actually answering the phone calls for them and then they're forwarding it to them. You know, if they're not on that call within a couple minutes. You know, three or four other roofing clients are calling them back. Um, I had one of the clients that I talked to actually mention the fact that he um, went out to a job site, and while he was there, another roofing company showed up to give a quote on a service magic lead. So you can tell those types of stories when you're talking to these people. Uh, most of them will tell you how much they hate service magic anyway. Um, so just play on that. It's really a not a hard sell when you're going through this. Um, but I just wanted to touch on the closing thing there. Um, it's really uh it's just a simple thing to sell i can't can't stress that enough but um one of the objections um that you'll get a lot um and then people that i've talked to in our one on one calls are saying you know i don't have leads coming in what are what am i going to do if they ask me about the leads because in the the outbound message you know we're telling them that we have these leads coming in um and again with that you can just straight up be honest with them like you know this was this is our prospecting tool to talk to you about the leads um, and then explain to them that you it costs you money to drive traffic to the websites and if you don't have somebody you know signed up with your company to buy the leads then it would be silly for you to drive traffic to the sites generating leads for nobody um, so just tell them that you have the site set up and that's a, a kind of another takeaway is you want to make sure you have a site set up in that city that way you can send it to them like this is an example of the sites that we make uh, that generate phone calls for us and as soon as I get somebody committed you know to to purchasing a call package for me then we're gonna start our efforts as far as generating traffic to those sites go um, so that is the way that you should handle that objection um, which I'm sure it, it does come up so it's a legitimate concern that you guys have but it's a simple workaround as far as that goes um, and again the a real important thing is to have the, the site set up so that you can show them already um, so yeah, just read through this, you guys, all the bold items. Again, they're just kind of touching points if you come across that scenario during your phone call. Um, if they want to know how it works, you know, you can talk about that. Um, the introduction, you know, that's probably something that you should start out with, um, but then just kind of see where the, where the phone call takes it. You know, you don't want to read a script, uh, but it's good to have some 
bullet points here um, whenever you're ready to do the closing hop down to the closing section and kind of go off of that um, same thing if they ask about pricing you can talk about that just scroll down to pricing uh, and then the note section here so this is uh, kind of how my business model works as far as getting the uh, getting the call packages replenished so I'm not selling a monthly call package I'm selling a set of calls so once I've went through those phone calls then the client has one week to basically purchase another call package or else they they're gonna lose their exclusive rights to the leads um, so this is a kind of another takeaway when you're calling these people back once you have somebody that you've signed up you still want to call everybody else back and ask them if they're interested in kind of being on a backup list uh, because if you do get somebody that you know you, you might be a situation where you're generating too many leads and they can't they can't fulfill the their obligation as far as taking care of those leads or they might just be too busy so you want to have somebody in a backup spot that's willing to buy them from you uh, but yeah so once once a call package is depleted I give my clients one week to purchase another call package or else I can work with another client um, so that's kinda how that goes but just read through this you guys adapt it to your style um, or give it to your salesperson let them do that uh, but that's just kinda how I go about it and feel free to make a, a comment here or message me on Skype if you guys have any questions talk to you later hey guys Chris Beatty here I wanted to make a video for you guys a lot of you have been emailing me asking me you know how do you get leads so I'm just gonna touch on a few things that have worked well for me um, I'm not going to go into depth this is just kind of bonus training um, it's not what the course was about but I understand some of you want some help in that regard so I wanted to make some videos for you and you guys the first thing I'm gonna talk about I think a lot of local marketers or offline marketers whatever you want to call yourself I think they forget or they underestimate the power of Craigslist or classified ad sites and let me just I guess point out you guys uh, I mean there's Craigslist there's back pages all kinds of different classified sites so I'm gonna show you Craigslist here today and uh, just basically take what I'm showing you today and you can apply it across any of the classified ad sites and you guys these things get a ton of traffic so don't underestimate these and it definitely helps to have these little ads out there um, in whatever niche it is that you decide to go with so one thing I want to say about this so there's a couple things to make your ad stand out the first thing is you want to have an image in your ad right so if you've ever looked on Craigslist I'm sure if you're like me my eyes go to the ones with pictures or images and what they do um, Craigslist allows you to either upload pictures and that's when it'll say pick here so it'll say PIC or you can embed an image with HTML and I'll show you how to do that that's what I like to do um, I don't like to use the the picture function I just think it's kinda I don't know I, I just think it's kinda ugly you can make it look a lot better with the image function and so that's the first thing you want to add an image to your ad because image ads get clicked on a lot more than other ads okay and you know just by having this out here it's gonna get clicked more and then another thing that you guys can do is add special characters to your subject lines uh, just to draw attention to your ad for example let me just show you an ad that I have here um, so this one I have HVAC Indianapolis that's another tip put your keyword as part of the title and then you want to address the problem that they're having so I have broken AC or furnace with a question mark and then you notice I got these little stars here okay so those are ways to make your subject lines or your heading whatever you want to call it, your title to make them stand out uh, what you can do it's a website called fsymbols.com so f s y m b o l s dot com so it's f symbols these are made for Facebook but you can really use them for anywhere and all you have to do is basically copy the image that they have here you can just highlight it control C and then whenever you're making your Craigslist ad you just paste that into the subject line you see this little star was this one right here that I have um, so that's one tip just to get your ad clicked on and then this is what the ad should look like something like this you guys so if you see this looks like a website right so most ads if we go back to this one for example let's click on this first one okay so if you're reading or you click on an ad and you see this one versus clicking on an ad and seeing this you know what are you more than likely going to do right so you see a, a picture of a video right here 
there's a good chance that you're going to click on this play button and listen to this video, right? But what happens, I have this entire ad. So if, if someone said, yeah, I want to you know, fill out this form because I want to get a free quote, if they click here to enter their name, basically what's going to happen is it's going to pop open another website, right? So it looks just like that, but now they're actually on my website, which is hvacindianapolisin.net. And now they can actually listen to the video by clicking here. They can submit their name and phone number to get a quote. Um, and so that's that's one way to do it, you guys. And I, I just want to point out adding an image, you know, versus something like this, they're going to get clicked on a lot more often. I'm just going to hit the back button. Okay. And then I have some text in here also that has my keywords in it. You guys, the reason I like to put keywords in these with some niches, you can actually get your Craigslist ad to rank on the first page of Google. Um, and so that's some, it doesn't always happen, but occasionally because Craigslist is an authority site, you know, if you got your, your on site set up properly, you can get them to rank sometimes, not always, but um, I haven't quite perfected that. Whenever I do, I'll let you guys know, but um, I have had these rank on the first page of Google before. Uh, but anyway, so I have the first part right here. So this is part of the ad. Then this whole section is just a screenshot of that website that we were looking at right here okay so if you want to do that I'm just gonna show you a quick and easy way to do that okay so don't be scared of editing images or anything like that just make a website so if you have a landing page or anything set up go ahead the first thing you want to do is get your site set up to where you can capture leads okay so set your site up and then what you want to do is just go out to your site and for this one since it's kinda of zoomed in I'm gonna hit control minus and it's going to zoom out a little bit enough to get me the information that I need to stick in my ad to make it look good okay and so then what I'm going to do is a print screen okay so just control print screen or whatever it is whatever the command is for you guys um, but just do that and then what you're going to do at that point is open up some type of image editor okay and I use what's called paint.net and this is a free image editor okay and then all you're going to do because I'm recording a video my uh, my image capture software is being used right now so I can't do it um, but all you're, you would do is you're gonna basically copy print screen your website take it over here and then you're just going to use this little feature here okay it's a little square box or whatever image editing you want and then you just cut out the part of the website that you want hit control cut Okay, and then it's going to cut out that part of the site. Then you would open up a new file, hit OK, then Control V or go up here and hit Edit, Paste, and then it's going to paste that website right here into that image. Okay, and then all you have to do, you guys, is go to like your WordPress site and upload it to a WordPress site to get the HTML. Okay, and what you would do there, so I just opened up a WordPress install. And you just go to your post section. Okay, you don't have to name it because you're not going to actually save the post. It's just an easy way. It's how I use it to get my images or whatever. Um, so then you would just go up here to add media. And then you click upload files, select files, anywhere. So you'd find basically wherever we saved the uh, wherever we saved the website image. Okay, you're going to go there and find that image here. And then all that's going to happen, you guys, I'm sure you guys are familiar with WordPress, um, but once it once that's in here, it's going to give you a little bit of code. Okay, so if you're on the visual, you'll be able to see the actual image in here. And if you go to the text part, this is where you're going to get the HTML code. And so whatever this code is, then you're just going to copy and paste that into your Craigslist ad, okay? And I might actually do a demo video since I can't actually get that to work at this very moment, you guys, but I just wanna give you an overview of how I do this. And so whenever you're creating your ad, you'll put in your text first, okay? Then you're gonna put in that HTML code that you got from your WordPress site where you uploaded that image, okay? So then you paste that in here, and then the rest of your text underneath that, you hit save, and now you have an ad and you want to link that ad to the website so like this one for example whenever someone clicks on it again they go to my website bam they can listen to the video put in their name and their phone number and they can get a quote so um, that is one cool way to do it you guys I just wanted to point out that having an image ad versus just a straight text ad is always going to be more beneficial to you 
um, and then using things like the uh, fsymbols.com to make your subject lines stand out a little bit more like this. You can add those to the front, you can add them to the back. Just do something to make your ad stand out whenever someone's scrolling through here, right? So if someone were to just come out here, right? So here's my ad, I reposted it. Um, HVAC Indianapolis broken AC or furnace it's got these so if you're looking at all these ads right which ones stand out to you <laughs> right this one does because it's got the image here it's got these little stars it's addressing the problem so this ad gets clicked on a lot more than just something like this you know camo plumbing drains and excavation right nobody cares about that crap they want to know about problems so put the problems in the title and put some symbols in here to make it stand out and that should help you guys so um, yeah Craigslist and classified ads are an awesome way to generate leads you guys um, that's all for this video I think I'm gonna make a demo actually showing you how to post the ad under this so look out for that video and I'm gonna record a couple others that will also help you guys in generating some leads so uh, take care okay so I'm going to show you now how to basically create that ad alright so again my image capture software uh, was being used for video uh, which it is again but I went ahead and took that screenshot so I'm just gonna show you what I would do to duplicate this ad okay so the first thing we would do um, you wanna type in whatever text you wanna have above your image okay so I'm just going to I'm not gonna recreate all this okay so uh, if I go back to the visual tab hit control V Okay, so now I got broken AC or furnace. Don't panic and trust fixing it to just anyone. All I did, you guys, um, if you bought the scribble videos, one time offer, I just took the script off of that um, and made that my text as far as the image ad goes. So um, nothing too difficult. You don't want to uh, to make it more complicated than it needs to be. Okay. Um, so again, we're back inside the WordPress post. Um, just click on post, add new post. You don't have to title it because you're not going to be posting this. This is just so that you can get the HTML code, you guys, um, which makes it really easy for posting your ad. Okay. So I grabbed that first part of the text that we want to have above the image, broken AC or furnace, and I bolded that so you could highlight whatever text you want bolded and just do that here because you won't be able to do that inside Craigslist. Okay. So just make your whole ad within your WordPress post that way you can make it look how you want and then when you transfer that HTML code to Craigslist it's going to make everything look a lot better okay so that's why I like to do it this way um, so we would hit enter at this point and now we want to add the image right so this ad all I did I took I went to the website so go to whatever website you want and if you I'm using Snagit right now so if you guys want to grab Snagit or Jing or actually I'm not sure if Jing still available but um, any type of image software where you can just basically highlight a little box and then it'll capture that image so all I did I just took this right here and I drug it from here to here just made this whole little box the image okay and so if I go back to my post and now I hit add media hit select files and I have it on my desktop so let me find the desktop uh, let's see here desktop okay and I named it HVAC Indianapolis which is another tip you would like to keep your keywords as the title also um, so HVAC Indianapolis IN there's my image so now I have that uploaded and along with all of my uh, sales page images from local lead igniter so um, you see that there but I got the image and all you have to do at this point you guys is take that image okay so we got the title over here to the right okay and what we want to do is we want to link that image to the website that we have set up to capture the leads okay so you want the alignment to be center Okay, so you can choose left, right, center, or none. Go ahead and center it. And then you don't want to link this to a media file. You want to link it to a custom URL. So you want to go up, grab the website URL that you want to send them to whenever they click on your ad. So I'm going to highlight that, control C, and I'm going to paste that URL in there. That way, whenever they click on this image in my ad, they go to the website. All right. And so I'm going to do a full size, and then we're going to hit insert into post okay so now what we've done is we've added that image into this post okay so now this is what the ads looking like right 
So broken AC or furnace, don't panic and trust fixing it to just anyone. And actually, you guys, let me see here. I don't know that I had that centered. It looks like it's left aligned. I guess it doesn't really matter. Um, but yeah, so I mean, if you want to to change this to being left aligned, uh, we'll just go back here and go to advance. Let me see here. See if I'm that great with it. You know what, you guys? I'm going to leave it alone. But you can left align it or center it, whatever you want to do. Uh, right now, that ad or that image is linked up to my website. Okay. And so then what I would do is grab the rest of the text. So again, you don't have an ad set up, so you wouldn't be copying and pasting, but just write in whatever text you want for your ad. And if you guys don't want to have text, you don't have to. It just I think it helps um, SEO purposes. Um, and then I'm just going to paste the rest of that in there, okay? And so now this is my entire ad, right? So at the very top, we've got broken AC or furnace. Don't panic and trust fixing it to anyone. Then they see this awesome image that looks like a video, and they're likely going to click on that video to watch it uh, just because that's what people like to do. And when they do so, they're actually going to go to the website. Um, and then down here is just some more text to try to entice them into calling. Um, and one more thing I forgot was the phone number down here at the bottom. So please don't call that number, you guys. Um, I don't want to uh, have my client get charged for a lead that's not legit. So uh, let's see here. Uh, okay, so now we're back inside WordPress, and I'm just going to paste the phone number in there. And that's all for my ad, you guys. So now all you have to do, once you have that whole ad set up, is now go to the text button up here in WordPress and now it just gives you a whole bunch of HTML okay and so all I would do take this copy it so you can right click hit copy or control C however you want to do it then you hop back to Craigslist and you basically go to post okay and when you're doing home service contracting so depending on what your niche is um, you want to pick the right one but you would do it in skilled trade services for the home service niches uh, which is the industry that I typically tell you guys to go after um, then all you do this is where you're gonna put your title you're gonna put your location and then in the posting description this is basically where you're going to paste your HTML okay so I'm just gonna do kind of a generic one here let me copy this and you guys you don't want to do duplicate ads because um, they'll do what's called ghosting where they'll give you a link that shows that your ads live but it really doesn't ever show up on the site uh, But I'm gonna just do this anyway because I don't care if this one's ghosted my ads already there Indianapolis Indiana and then I'm going to head back to my ad now copy this and now we're gonna paste that HTML code in there and this one we got licensed and we don't have to show anything else so if we hit continue <coughs> uh, let's see if you're licensed I guess you have to uh, put something there so I just put Indianapolis um, then it, this tells you that you can add up to eight images you guys since we already uploaded an image via HTML from our WordPress site right because there's already an image here it's going to detect that so you don't have to upload any images here um, so I would just click done with images and then it's going to show you an example of what your ad looks like okay so this is the same ad HVAC Indianapolis right it looks just like the one that I showed you guys so that's the process of uploading your ad then you would hit publish it's gonna send you a link to your email address and at that point you would go in there um, they might ask you to verify your account if, uh, if you haven't done that already um, so just go through that process you guys but that's a an easy way to create an awesome Craigslist ad that's gonna generate leads for you um, and so yeah I guess that's all for this video you guys I'll show you how to uh, do some more stuff and some other videos chat with you soon